welcome to my channel. What we have here today is another charade old timer sent to us by Toby and family. And I have these other guys up here to contrast it. This is the boot knife and that large sharp finger. So let me get those two guys out of the way because we don't need them right now. And here's the huge box that it comes in. 165 OT. So you sit over there. You sit over there. And you sit over there. Alright. So, first off again, we have another excellent leather sheath. You can tell this thing's kind of curved a little bit because of the blade. Two nice rivets at the mouth, right where you get your biggest stress point from putting it in and out. Um, a nice belt loop. Looks like it'll take about a two inch. Yeah, over. You can put over a two inch belt in there. Let me see. Yeah, that spreads out. Big enough belt to handle this knife, definitely. I mean, very nice stitching. Of course, we got to test. Yep, smells like genuine leather. Got to get that leather fix. Little button here that says charade on it. Old timer. All right, let's pull a guy out now. Uh, curb. So what you have here is a five-inch blade. I'm gonna read out the specs here. It's a five-inch blade, point one two blade thickness. Nine. Let me get this out here. It'd be like fan of white. Nine point five inches overall. Five inch blade. We'll measure how much cutting edge we got because they're probably measuring from here. Satin finish. We got to get him to satin. Satin. Satin finish. There we go. Um, brown comp handle. They didn't say Delrin, did they? Full tang. 7CR17 MOV, which is like 448. Nickel silver shield. I think he means this. Or or this. This is a shield. This guy looks brass. And it feels brass. Uh, leather sheath. We already verified that that's a leather sheath. I have the weights. I'll put it in later on I, I, in the picture right now. I, I think it was like nine, nine ounces with the sheath. But... It has a very nice handle to it, very nice weight. This is a, a hollow grind here. Let me check, make sure. It didn't say, it said plain grind, but yeah, it, it's got a slight hollow to it. There's a little bit of a hollow grind going on there. <clears throat> it's a nice curvy blade. Let's check her actual cutting edge length oh, I gotta set this down I can't see crap I definitely need new glasses get them one of these days so it looks like we got about a four and a half inch cutting edge here and a five inch blade now what I want to interject here is when I walk around every morning, I usually find something of value. So I found this laying around. This is just a U.S. quarter. It's not as valuable to me as these two things, these little feathers. Because what you're looking at here is the beginning era of writing element. You know, you take one of these and you cut off a little piece of the end there. And you got yourself a, you know, you got some pigment or dye. And boom, you got yourself a writing instrument. And it relates to knives because of pin blades. You know, so usually a pin blade is a smaller blade. Because, you know, you whip out a big bowie knife, you're going to have a hard time shaving one of these down. Yeah, you can do it. You could stick it down on the ground like that and try to, you know, whittle off the edge. 
but it'd be much easier with a pin knife because then you've got the knife in one hand and the quill here and you just beep 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 you don't need a huge blade i don't know why i threw that in there but i like this one really curvy let's see how it does on curd bird oh yeah i haven't touched it you know stropped it or any of that crap Slice away. Watch your fingers. Watch your fingers. Yeah. <clears throat> Pretty good. Now, usually, if I've got a big knife with me, I've always got a small knife with me. Uh, because one knife can't be everything. So this is a pretty good... This would be like, if you were camping, it could be your all-around kind of knife, you know? It's, it's in that blade length four to five inches now you you're, you're getting something you can work with and a full tank now used to be i looked at these pins and i always thought well it's just brass all the way through you know this whole diameter is the same through the tang but not necessarily and if you've got a full tang then it doesn't really matter how big these pins are it's just to hold the covers on it's not to you know help stabilize the blade that much but if you've got a rat tail or if you've got something else going on and you see pins like this sometimes these are just caps these are not really pins so and unless you would take it apart i like the how they did this i wish i would have kept that brown going over there but that looks kind of cool see it matches on this side but yeah a very a very nice knife i think it's like $29 at Smoky Mountain Knife Works and like I said you get a you get a really nice leather sheath I mean this is not an El Cheapo sheath it's it's very well made reinforced at the right points and everything nice color to it and then this guy secures it pretty well and you've got a full handle here. Let's check the handle length. I don't think they listed that in their little spurs of recursions. <clears throat> Let's see. Yeah, you got a you got a four inch handle here. <clears throat> see, my hand is like three inches. So that's why that cold steel buoy, it's got like a three and a half inch distance between the hilt and here so when i grab it it fits my hand like a glove the other ones uh i think the baron sun is the largest one it has like a four and a quarter inch gap between it and the cold steel has like a four inch gap in between that and that makes a difference how well the knife fits your hand see with smaller hands i got an extra inch here that i can mess around with you know, I can widen my fingers out and still ha have use of the knife. But if this handle was shorter, you know, you start getting a shorter... Sorry about my fingernails. I've been out there digging in the dirt and stuff. Uh, <clears throat> if it's shorter, then you get an issue where you're, you're always choking up on the knife. You feel like you're about ready to lose it or something, you know, so ergonomics makes a big difference. Why do I say that this is probably less value than that, uh, than those feathers? Well, I don't want to bring politics or anything like that into it, but, you know, around globally, inflation is, is going crazy for everybody. Inflation, supply shortages, all that other crap. So, if this stuff ever stresses you out, what I try to do is take my mind off of it. Don't, you know, turn off the news or wherever you're getting your information from. <clears throat> and do something that you enjoy, you know. Look through your knives and polish them, you know, or clean them up, or oil them, or sharpen them, you know, or organize them, you know. And that's just knives. You can do anything else, too. But just basically separate yourself from all the chaos and BS that's going on around in the world and sit back and enjoy, you know. Get in a rocking chair. This is the old guy talking. 
get in a rocking chair and a piece of wood and just sit out there and start carving and rocking and listening to the birds sing. For me, I would have to do that early in the morning because it's usually pretty noisy around here. Today it's 87% humidity. It's supposed to get up to almost 100 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, so, yeah, I got my walking in already. Get it done early in the morning. So there you go. I hope you enjoyed that. Don't overlook these old timers, especially these ones with the. They're not a. They're not a cheesy leather sheath like you would think. You know, for the price that you're gonna get, it's pretty decent. And the knives are good too, man. I mean, if you're on a budget, you can't go wrong with one of these. What had always scared me before about not scared, but shied me away from first you know when we went from america manufacturer to chinese it was kind of like eh but after a while you realize it's not going to reverse itself you might as well get over it although they are coming out with some made in usa ones so uh that's good you know they cost more but hey they're all those people that were bitching and moaning about china now have their chance to buy a usa one all right, and see what the difference is in price. It's usually like double what you would pay for a made in China one. But if you want to be patriotic and you want to do all that stuff, then there you go. Put your money where your mouth is. So, there you go. I didn't fall in with that. But what I like about the charades also, one of the things I think they missed out on, I like that they got the model number. I like that they got their name in the ting. Stamp country of origin. If you're trying to put it there, live with it. Don't try to hide it. You know, if you're made in China, put it there and just say, hey, it's got a nice finger twiddle here too. Hey, we're made in China. You know, <clears throat> for those that are concerned about it or whatever, because I think it's it's requirement. If you're exporting materials and stuff, it used to be there was a law that said. You have to put the country of origin on your blade. I don't know if it's applicable anymore because obviously, look, they didn't do it this time. They put it on the box, you know, but the box can be thrown away. See? Made in China. All right, you can put it on a box, put it on the blade. That sounds like a motto. If you got it on a box, put it on the box. If you got it on a box, put it on the blade. Yeah, <clears throat> so there you go, I've rambled on, I've drifted off into who knows what. I've gone off into la-la land. So remember, put a feather in your cap. I had a cap on, I was going to do that, but I didn't want it to blow away. And uh, enjoy, your, enjoy your knives, you know. Have fun. Don't let this crap stress you out. If it does, you cut through the stress with a knife. <laughs> Take that stress. Really, used to be when I was shooting and everything, if life got, you know, stressed out for me and everything, I'd go to the target range, you know, the pistol range, and blast away, or I'd go plinking or something, you know. And it'd take my mind off of it, because I had fun. And um, in a knife analogy, you would go out and you would do something with your knife, you know. You'd carry it, look at it, polish it, throw it in the ground, attack a... I wouldn't attack a living tree, you know, unless I needed it, but not this. I'm this I have hugged trees before. I have hugged trees, and I was proud of it. I prou I'm proud to admit I have hugged trees before. Of course, I've cut them down also, but I've hugged them. I hugged them before I cut them down. Thanks for watching, and have a nice day.